Hey everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz video tutorial and today we are going to create a car paint shader for Octane Render using 3D Studio Max and if you are using another uh, 3D software uh, you can that has Octane Render you can uh, apply this tutorial and uh, get that same effect okay that we're gonna that we're approaching here for today's uh, topic all right so what we're gonna do is we have a GT3 uh, car model in front of us here and the look that we're gonna that we're going after is something like this a high gloss uh, finish to to your car paint uh, you can see there's a nice uh, fall off there's a nice uh, see the um, the lighting is done very well with this render and um, that's kind of the look that we're going for uh, and just to really get this kind of sense of realism um, and quality all right, so we're gonna get started and we're gonna start creating a, a, a base shader or a base um, layer for our car paint. So we're gonna select our material here and we're gonna use the glossy material that uh, Octane provides. We're gonna go to the diffuse map and we're gonna see where it says here value. We're gonna check that and on the drop down, we're gonna go into uh, texture and what we want to do here is create a nice fall off. So we need that kind of candy or that light kind of blue falling off to the dark. We're going to need that kind of look. So this is a good starting uh, point to get that look is we're going to go through the diffuse and we're going to find ourselves some nice fall off properties here. So we do see the fall off map, but before we do that, we got to go to our texture, our mixed texture that is, and where it says amount, we're going to change that over to texture and go into the properties, and this is where we're gonna type, or not type, but are gonna check into our fall off map here. We're just gonna check that, and then we're gonna apply um, our fall off here. But before we do that, I gotta add my colors. So we're gonna come over to our first texture. We're gonna bring this color drop down, okay? And then what we're gonna do is grab a nice blue color Okay, something a little light. Try that for now. We're gonna go to our second color. Okay, um, and we're gonna make this a little bit of a darker blue. Something like that. Okay. So our fall off map is pretty much already controlling our paint as you can see here. We got the light values. Uh, we get some light and then it goes dark. But we're gonna have to fix this a bit. So we're gonna have to come over to our paint here and you can see, see if I can get, there we go, a sphere here. Okay, our preview, and what we need to do is change this to 5.5. Okay, so we're gonna just take the fall off skew and change that. Then we're gonna bring up our normal. Okay, we're gonna start pulling in the dark value, but. I need to actually find a nice property and see if I can, there we go. So if I bring this down, you can see already here, we're getting some change. Let's just bring this. So I'm gonna bring this skew back up. And then we're getting some nice fall off here. So let's try about uh, the fall off skew, about 0.3, the normal. No, we'll just leave it at zero. Okay, and then um, also the grazing, we can just leave that at one as well. So you can see right now we got a little bit of a nice uh, fall off, the light blue, and um, that's just a good start. And you can see these little points here where there's these little highlight areas, they kind of go lighter. And that's, if we're looking something like that. That's kind of what we're going for there. All right, so now the next property that we're gonna aim for here is we're gonna change our specular. So our specular can go to a color as well. We're gonna do the lighter blue, something like that. Okay, and that's gonna change our specular tone here. And then um, we'll have to take our index. We're gonna bring that up to like a six. Okay, and you can see now we're getting a really nice metallic look. Um, and then our roughness, 
Actually, I might do this to eight. But what we need to do here at this point uh, is that we're going to change our specular and we're going to, or sorry, not our specular, our roughness, and we're going to add a texture to this. And we're actually going to add a galvanized steel. Now, I got this um, uh, off of uh, a Corona render um, or Corona tutorial showing the way you can get uh, flakes in your paint. And that was a uh, pretty much right off the developer's uh, website uh, showing that. So it kind of inspired me to create one for uh, Octane here. So um, using the galvanized steel texture, which you can find uh, anywhere on the net, pretty much those CG textures is where you'd like to pick that up. And you can use galvanized steel for uh, adding the flakes. All right, so it's just gonna, it's gonna fake the, uh, the flakes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a grayscale image and then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to plug in a galvanized steel. Or galvanized steels. I'm not saying that right. <laughs> just... Alright, so once the galvanized steel texture is applied, you can see that we're getting some streaks. Everything's kind of looking uh, funky here. So we're going to have to fix that by our projection. We're going to have to change that over to a box. So that's going to kind of, uh, that's going to fix most of our problem here. Um, we're not going to go with any UVW mapping uh, to tra traditional way in 3D Studio Max. We're actually just going to run these properties right through Octane Render itself. Um, so you can see we already have some uh, some interesting look right now. Uh, as you can see that we're getting some of the uh, galvanized steel texture to come through. But uh, there are very large flakes at this moment, so we're going to have to change that. So we're going to come over to our... See, it's uh, our box properties here where it says normal box. We're going to add in our scale and we're going to just scale this guy down. So, point, uh, I'd say 0 0.03 or so. Okay, and I believe that will be good in the size for now. We'll see. It might have to be changed later. But right now, we're not seeing it as much now because now that it's smaller. You know, everything needs to be, uh, we need to jack up the contrast of the actual texture to pull out some of those uh, specular values, so, or the, the, the whites of the actual texture. So what we got to do here is change this, but before we do this, as you can see I applied the grayscale. Um, I don't know if I really actually want to go this route, so what I'm going to have to do is add a color, I'm going to copy this guy, and I'm going to add a uh, texture again here. I'm just going to clear this after I've copied it. And I'm going to go to color correction. And now I'm going to apply the texture here. The reason why I did this is now I'll be able to control the gamma and contrast of the actual texture. This is going to bring out our galvanized uh, steel texture so that it shows as more of the flakes and the specular hits from the light will actually come through a little bit more here. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second as I um, have a look at this texture. So right now you can see the texture looks very faint. Okay, it's very gray and a lot of our values are hidden within this texture. So if I come in and jack up our contrast to 100%, you're gonna start to see the steel or the galvanized coming through here. You're actually starting to see this more looks like flakes. All right, so we're gonna have to plate this property a bit to uh, get a nice look. So if I bring the, let's see, if I go to uh, 2.2, let's bring up the brightness quite a bit. You can see we're starting to get a nice look here of the, uh, of the flakes. Okay, so right now um, we still got to make this a little bit more rougher. So we have to pick a nice medium here. So if I bring this down, the more I bring the gamma down, the more rough the reflections will come in because this is our base coat. So we want this to kind of be uh, more on the brush metal look. 
And so we start applying our clear coat as a second secondary texture that will be added in a mix, okay? So actually what I could do is go back, let's go back, and let's take this guy, and copy it, we're gonna add a bump texture as well and apply this. This is gonna help feather out everything here. But now we're gonna just change the values a bit of this. So as we bring the gamble up, Okay, it's about, it's about three for now. Okay, you're gonna start to see some really nice, really nice look happening here. I might need to bring these flakes a bit down. Yeah, I'm gonna bring these down just a bit more in scale. Point one. Okay, and we're also going to do that with the roughness as well. Okay, so 0 0.01 seems pretty good. Just gotta be careful it doesn't get too repetitive. Um, if you start seeing a pattern throughout the uh, the surface of the car, um, you know you can always uh, uh, just watch those scaling properties and making sure that you're not getting too much pattern there. Okay, so once we have a nice look for our car paint uh, for the base material, that is, we can now add our our coat. Okay, so you can see now. In the preview, we're getting some nice flakes going throughout the, uh, the base uh, paint here, okay? Or the base of our paint. So let's now select our mix material here. We're going to keep the uh, previous material. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in, add a glossy material in our second material slot, change the diffuse to a darker. Something like this. And then what we're gonna do is change the roughness to 003. And now look what we're getting here. So maybe around two, depends on your glossiness. You wanna watch the, uh, depending on your values of your HDR's brightness, um, you can play these, these two properties between the uh, glossy material property, sorry, the, um, the coat material property and the uh, HDR you just don't want to have blowout throughout your um, your uh, reflections of your car okay so this is looking quite nice this is a very high gloss look um, we can always change the coating if we want it to be a little bit lighter blue you can change that a bit we we'll just got it have it in a dark darker or more deep blue okay that always looks nice Okay, and then if you want to change um, the other value here, you can see where we're getting that lighter blue. Um, we can come in to our specular here, just change that to more of a deeper blue. Okay, something like this. Okay, now we're starting to get a really nice look. And if you get down close to the paint, and you're starting to see you get the nice flakes coming through. So that's pretty cool. I think um, we're, that pretty much sums up this video tutorial um, with the car paint. This is just a, a, a way of, one way of doing it uh, with Octane Render. Um, at some point, they'll probably bring out a car paint shader uh, that is. Um, integrated with Octane, but for now, um, this is one way you could uh, add flakes and get nice richness to your car paint uh, going this route. And uh, hopefully you learned something from this tutorial, guys. 
Um, stay tuned for more tutorials and also check out my previous ones at www.renderspaz.com. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below if you like this video. Please like it. If you disliked, uh, then a thumbs down. Um, but other than that, guys, thank you very much for your time. Hope you learned something from this and take it to your uh, automotive or whatever it may be. Um, 3D models and renders and uh, add it to your work. Okay, guys. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.